Walter? Yes, sir. We well, got in a little argument down here and gonna have to have a ruling. Yes. What about, sir? Well, we're going to the Presbyterian Church according to your arrangements out there in the morning, and Pope is not up around here when we leave. And they're afraid that they won't be on time at Phoenix, and Marie's getting ready to go to church with us, and she says she can't go. <laughs> I said, you can't tell me that church that I think that much of, and I think that broad and reasonable that if your own church is not available, that they won't let you go to any church. Uh -huh. I just know better. I know that's not the official. No, thing. she's right. She, she can go to that one if she goes to hers, too. Well, but she can't find one of hers. <laughs> They'll have one in Phoenix at the same time yours is. No, she says not. I bet they do. Well, <laughs> advanced man says not. Well, then, then, then the, the let her wait for you, then. If she can't go to one. That's what she says. She said she'll sit outside that's right. No church at all. Well, I'm disappointed in your church. I just hate to say that, but I'd, I'd think if, you, if you're, if there's none available, can't go any other place, well, then just put this damn uh, uh, <laughs> doctor in the, uh, to dog in the manger. That's a dog in the manger, doctor. Well, that's it, though. You sure? Yes, sir. Any question about it. She'd go to another one if she goes to hers, too. Well, she goes to hers every Sunday when it's available. She'd go to it tomorrow if it's available. <laughs> but you all just won't let her go, huh? Well, that's a, that's a matter for her to determine. Well, now, you know how much freedom she's got on that. <laughs> well, I just guess I'll have to. How'd you all do on the poll? Well, uh... We got them all pretty well posted up, Dick did. Mm -hmm. But we haven't gotten any more uh, new ones. Well, he did he get Denver posted? Yes, sir. Why did he leave it out of the first one? Well, he, he got it after he, we talked to you today. Oh, hell, we had it two days ago. Well, he didn't, I guess. Mm -hmm. He came and brought it in to me. Well, he had the one three weeks ago. He, well, he, just, he just missed it, but he's got a brand new one on Colorado that I guess that maybe you don't even have. Uh, he's not here. Let me see if I can find it. I got it from Denver from two days ago, Palmer Hoy. Is that the one that's... Uh, Shows us dropping from 68 to 64. Right, 64, 30, and 6. No, 64, 36. Boy, we had it. No, he got it from, uh, from today because he didn't have it. And it was 64, 30, and 6 is what he No, did. we were 68 and 32. You were 68, 26, and 6 three weeks ago. 68, 26, six, but he told me that we dropped 64, called it to Jack. From 68 to 64, we lost four, and he gained six. He went from 30 to 36. That's what Jack had. Well, that's not the way Dick got it from him this afternoon. He had it three weeks ago, 68, 26, and 6. Now 64, 30, and 6. So we lost four, and he gained four, and the other side stayed the same. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope that's right. But that's significant in South Dakota, Gallup, Ash. And I hope that Quay and Gallup and them will think that we did some good this week. I hope so, too. I've talked on a lot of the things you gave me, but I haven't talked on all of them by any matter of means, because was, I listed them after we got to talking. There were 45. Uh, Cliff says that they've ordered uh, two million. Yeah, forty-five. What? The calls that you gave me earlier today, and I'm just. I gave you forty-five. Yes, sir. How did that? I didn't give you that many. Yes, sir. I sure did. Herman Talmadge, Bob McKinney, Fred Dutton, Larry O'Brien, Dick McGuire, Clark Clifford, George Meany, Roy Wilkins. Good Mike gosh, oh, never, never mind. It's all right. <laughs> uh, well, let's go. Let's see what happens on them. Uh, Cliff says they've or they ordered two million of the little 4 by 4 LBJs. Half of them have been delivered and have all been shipped. The other half are due to be delivered tomorrow or the next day. Now, how is he going to get them on the cars? Well, he's leaving that to the states. Well, they ain't going to do it. I told Bill Moore, you'd try to get him to get the citizens, young citizens, to do it. If he can't get them, get the scientists or get somebody to do it. They're not doing it in the states. For instance, Jesse hadn't got a decent sticker on his car. A.W. hadn't got one on his car. They got those old long ones and faded out. All right. 
They just say they can't find them in Houston. Can't find them in Dallas. They're just not getting them on. So tell him to talk to each one of these states, see how, what special arrangements they're going to do to get them on. I think the young citizens, if they've really got it, could be a good thing to get somebody in each county to take over that job. All right. Bob McKinney, I caught him at the opening of St. John's College yeah. in New Mexico. He said he'd just gotten back day before yesterday from a long trip to Europe. Yeah. He hadn't really had time to see how things were going. Yeah. But uh, that uh, he would call me back if I'd give him 48 hours and tell me the message of the whole situation statewide and what uh, needed to be done and so on and so forth. Good. Uh, Mary Lasker is very anxious. She's very anxious to swear in the new trustees of the Kennedy Center, 12 or 15 of them. We've appointed them. She thinks if, if you could swear them in in a 10-minute ceremony, that she could uh, then hit some of them up. Tell her, <coughs> we can just do it, but just tell her we got to do it. And has she done everything she said she'd do? Yes, sir. Well, I just tell her that we got a problem. That we need 15. What it is, and ask her how to handle it. Right. And just tell her you want to run me crazy with it. I got enough other, but ask her how to handle it. That may help her some more. All right. Because if she doesn't, why well, they'll be doing it up there with your friend Steve. You yeah, here? They told me about. They told you about the call I got from Bobby this afternoon. Yes, and what I would, do, what I would do is uh, call him back and just say that. Uh, uh, you talk to me, and I'm very anxious to do anything I can to help him. That I will make a five-minute statement that I haven't gone on with any candidates on a 30-second spot, that most of the people that advised me at the White House and uh, the political people that felt that it wasn't dignified for the president to be making a 30-second spot, and he shouldn't go on with any of the congressmen, any of the senatorial candidates. Each one of them wanted him to. And he had his picture made with him. But he wouldn't make a spot. But he does make five-minute uh, speeches for three or four of them. He has, and he'd be glad to do that on any subject they want. That he would thank the test ban treaty where the president and Bobby worked on it hard, or uh, that, that nuclear thing helps them a pretty good deal, or that the uh, crime thing would be good, or anything else that he wants me to do. I'll be glad to make a five-minute one and ask them all to, to vote for everybody the ticket and say I particularly need him to help me and need a good Democratic senator and need him. Good. I don't want to be going on with him uh, back and forth because if I do, I'll have to go on with tidings. And I'll have to go on with each candidate. And then I'll be in a five-minute thing, uh, being a boss, recommending them all. And uh, my people have just said I oughtn't to do it, and we turned them all down when they came through this year and turned the committee down three months ago. Wouldn't do any individual spots with them. I think that'll please him. But I want to make it on any subject he wants to, and we'll draft it. And then say, incidentally, please quit calling up down here and asking our people. You're getting them all unhappy. Dick Goodwin, Monaghan, different one. And if you talk to Steve Smith about it, just say, you all quit calling up and asking them now because we got a very few here and we've carried them we've got them organized now and let's don't be getting them unhappy he uh, i can say that better to steve than i can to bobby although he asked me to call him back i think i'll just call steve back instead steve was on the line with him when we talked all right that's what i do i said now we want to ask you to do something all these guys are using this for us so please don't be calling people if you want anybody you talk to the president or me about it all right but please don't be calling. We need everything we've got. We're very short, and, and we're trying to get Ken and these boys fit into this thing, get this committee running, Steve, but it's not running worth a damn, as you know, and as some of these folks like Roland Evans say that you've told them. I think he may have uh, learned, because uh, I couldn't say that anybody was ever any more uh, humble than he was in this conversation. He said, no, I need him. He says he's going to win New York by two and a half million, yeah, yeah. and I'm going to lose it. And I think he realizes now at last that he does need it. No. At he, least he, he put on a good show of it anyway. That's right. Uh, the way to respond is say the president is anxious to help in any way that he can without uh, uh, really hurting. And they got to be careful about that because 
As you know, these staffs have built things up pretty much. Yep. The antagonism between them. Right. And we just say the president and I urged him not to do it, but some of these young enthusiasts over at the Justice Department, Steve, have done this. But he is anxious, just keep using that word anxious, to help every way he can. And uh, he cannot uh, do it on a one-minute spot or a 30-second with any candidate because he's turned them all down. But he'll take a special five-minute program. And he'll speak on any subject, crime, and he'll tell about what the Attorney General's done, and he'll say he wants them to vote for the Democratic ticket. He'll say he particularly needs a Democratic Senator, and he particularly needs the Attorney General. That'll satisfy him completely. And to give you the subject, give us any way approach, and have his man write it if he wants to, to give us suggestions. Get it right down to us so we can have it for Tuesday. All right. And I'd put in a call for him now. So if he's out, you at least try to get him back the same day. All right. And call him in the morning. Dick McGuire said he would call Carvel and work it out to, to help him. And I really want the labor negros in on that. I too. talked to Meany. I have not got Wilkins. Wilkins is on a Caribbean cruise and won't be back till tomorrow night. Uh -huh. And uh, Secretary McNamara said that uh, he would get himself on a question and answer program just along that line. Said he didn't like uh, perhaps one like Meet the Press because he thought they would get him that you never could get that those people to keep from pressing him on the right. matters. But he said he'd get one that was uh, friendly, uh, where he could uh, have more control over them. And uh, maybe, maybe you could have uh, Stanton to ask you that. Get Stanton and send you three or four copies of that uh, transcript on uh, the Birch Society. All right. Tell him to want three or four copies right away. And we won't try to get the person and them really are doing, and we got to get some of the like Palmer Hart to make AP and UP write features about it and ask him questions about it. All right. If we don't get a few things like this and the mother and stuff going, he's going to have us answering all that. I'm just doing my damnedest in the hour I have off to get them started. Ken O'Donnell said he'd send you some reports, and he's sorry he hadn't to. Did he know I'd ask him to? Yes, sir. I, well, I told him you had. What did he say then? He just did, uh, did, did defies the boss, huh? More or less. He just said he'd been too busy, and he'd been doing it to work, but he hadn't been reporting, and that he would uh, write some up to me. I have no idea what's happening anywhere unless he tells me. Tell him I don't want to be in a vacuum, and that's what I am. Tell him you report to me every day, and I want him to report to me every day. Did you tell Larry what I said? Yes, sir. Was he happy, please? Yes, yes, sir. Well, do you reckon he'll take charge now and go to work? I don't believe Ken's taking charge like we thought, is he? In in a limited way, he is. Uh, he's working. Uh, he's working mainly uh, California, New York, Illinois, but he's working. Well, I didn't see what he's doing in Illinois. I was out there in Peoria and Springfield. Well, I think uh, then I'd, I'd change it. I'd say Chicago. Well, Daly, it looked like to me he was doing Chicago. Ken's been talking to him a lot. Yeah. Uh, Jim Rowe talked to Friendly. He's doing good. What Friendly say? He said that, uh, that they had all this uh, material on off, and they'd heard about it before, and they could have run it earlier, and uh, they hadn't done it because they didn't think it was uh, seemly, and that it wasn't too good a story. That uh, didn't think it's what? That, well, it, it was. Uh, it wasn't, well, it wasn't too. Wouldn't even think too fair to him because, uh, for some reason, to believe he didn't really know who the man was, and he thought his name Nelson, and uh, that uh, besides, life was carrying it all in just a few days, and that it would get much wider public, much wider.